Dr. Chibo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? You see, this thing I, I make you do every day is part of entering His rest. So, can we go say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I read a scripture to you yesterday from Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4. It says, let us, verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Let us be diligent to enter that rest. You see, this was the sole purpose or the main purpose the Holy Spirit was giving to us. This was why Jesus said, it is better for you that I go because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. This was the main reason. What is it? that you will come into the place of rest. So the intention of God, right from time. You see, let me use prayer as an example. We want to pray. The Bible clearly states that we don't know what we should pray for as we are. And what did God do knowing that, as many times his children pray and nothing, it doesn't work, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, the Bible says, John said, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have our petitions granted. Now, so imagine praying and God doesn't, God is not hearing you. Oh God, you pray and pray and pray, but God doesn't hear you. So what did God do? He planned to give us rest in the area of prayer. And how did he do that? He gave us his spirit and his spirit gave us a language. Thank you, Lord Jesus. His spirit gave us a language. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, and that language is to bring us into rest where prayer is concerned. Now, he said, he said prophetically in Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 12. Verse 12. He, let, me, let me read that verse. Isaiah 28 and verse 12. Now, let me start reading from verse 9. Verse 9 says, Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? I want you to follow. Who is he going to teach knowledge? Who is he going to make to understand the message? Who are they? He says, Those just weaned from milk, those just drawn from the breast, his accent. And then he now says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Now look at what he says in verse 11. For with stammering lips and other tongues, I will speak to these people to whom he said, this is the rest with which ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. But then sadly, it says, yet they will not hear. Isaiah was speaking prophetically that God is going to take you step by step, right? He's going to take you step by step. And then he will get to that place where he's going to give. That's what he says. For with stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak to this people. To whom he said, 
This is the rest. Now I want to show you something in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Watch this, Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. He said, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the way and see, and ask for the old path where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your soul. <laughs> oh, Jesus said, Come to me. And I will give you rest. The rest they already exists, right? And Jesus now comes and says, You've been walking in the wrong path. Same thing with prayer. You've been praying the wrong way. And God says, Look, I'll give you my spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, what happened? They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in other tongues. Now, when they began to speak in other tongues, something they realized was, hey, prayer is now different. Now, anybody who speaks in tongues knows this, that it makes prayer easy. Why? The Bible says, Romans tells us, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. The Holy Spirit helps us in that infirmity. Now, how does the Holy Spirit help you in that infirmity? This is exactly what the Holy Spirit does. Now, that's what Isaiah was saying, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Now, here in Jeremiah, he was speaking. He says, stand in the ways and see. Then now say, ask for the old paths. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing new God is going to do in your life today. There is no matter how you cry and pray, there is nothing new. Why? Because the Bible said the works were finished from the foundation of the earth. But hey, just like David spoke prophetically, he says all the earth is out of course. Psalm 82. He says all the earth is out of course. Everything is misplaced. So people struggle, and that's why people are struggling till this day. People struggle not because God has not done everything he's supposed to do. The Bible said the works were finished from the foundation of the world. If the works were finished, is this hardship people are experiencing part of the work? No, sir. No, sir. But many, many, and when I say many, majority have wandered out of the way. They have not found the way that they are supposed to walk in. Imagine, imagine after a road has been tarred, carved out, tarred, and everything. One is still trying to find a way in the bush. How hard that is going to be. That that's how, how the kind of labor we have taken upon ourselves because we have not found the path that God has walked in. You remember he said, I will go before you. I will make the crooked path straight. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you that you are not supposed to find a crooked path. Yes, if he says, I'm going ahead of you and I'm making the crooked path straight. Simple. You are not supposed to find any crooked path. If you find the crooked path, the first question you should ask yourself is this. Am I on the way that he has gone ahead of? You see that now? Am I on that way? That's a question you should ask yourself. If he has gone ahead and his job is to make the crooked path straight, and I believe his, his, his word is true, so it means I'm supposed to walk on straight paths. So when I find myself walking on crooked paths, most definitely I miss the way. Jeremiah is speaking and says, ask for the old path where the good way is and walk in it. 
When you do that, what's going to happen to you? Then you will find rest for your soul. All the Spirit of God is doing in your life. This happens to us when we pray. This is why we pray in the Spirit. And let me tell you one secret. When you pray in the Spirit, you're not just doing blah, 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 blah. Some people just have this funny idea. You see, praying instead of it to pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray and I receive. It's that thing. And then, okay, you know, some people think that's how to elongate your prayers. God says, okay, pray. Now, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. I bless you. I thank you, Lord. I know that's how people, some people pray. He says, okay, Father, I pray for my job. I pray for everyone at my job. He said, okay, I finished praying. There's nothing to add again. Okay, okay, I remember what one. I said, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know to avoid all that, just pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you can pray like that for 30 minutes. You don't understand this. You don't. Praying in the Spirit is God's way of helping you locate the old path that is the good path. So I find myself here and I'm wondering, I'm not supposed to walk on any crooked paths. So what do I do? I connect with the Spirit. Now you see why, why Isaiah was saying, this is the rest where he has caused the weary to rest. So I find myself, and, and this is not the path that God has created, because it's rough. So what do I do? How do I get to the old path? How do I get to that good way? I connect with the Holy Spirit who is the way. Are you getting this now? I connect with him. And then I begin to pray in the spirit. Now, while I'm praying in the spirit, something begins to happen. Now, this is the part many miss it. You're praying in the spirit. You are, your mind is on the fact that I'm just praying in tongues. No, no, no. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, you must open your mind. See, now because Paul said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed and my understanding is unfruitful. Now, that doesn't mean my understanding can never function when I'm praying in the spirit. Now, this is how people misunderstand Paul's teachings. Oh, the Bible says when I pray in tongues, my understanding is unfruitful. So, I'm just, my spirit is just the one praying. Brothers and sisters, listen, when we pray in tongues, we pray in tongues with our mind. Now, the Holy Spirit is in you. He's giving you utterance, right? Now, where do you first receive those utterance? Your mouth? No, your mind. You know, we say praying in tongues is one way to avoid your mind. So your spirit is praying and your mind can be doing every other thing. So like, you are still thinking. And so when I get home, this is what I'm going to do. Or you're still rokoma rakaba, but your mind is functioning differently. <laughs> Listen to me. When you pray in the spirit, now when you do that, you're praying in tongues. I'm just speaking like kaba yagaba brother. But then you see, you're not praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit means first and foremost, your mind must be set on the spirit. Your mind must be set on the Spirit. Because you see, because we pray in tongues, we have learned this funny thing that a lot of believers do. So they, they've learned a prayer language. Yes, you've learned it. Because it's not every time people pray in tongues that they are praying in the Spirit. I'll tell you the difference now. Praying in the Spirit means your mind is focused and engaged in what the Spirit is saying. Now, because your mind is on Him, you begin to receive from Him. And how would you receive from Him when you're not paying attention? 
So you begin to receive from him. And then you begin to receive first utterance. And that utterance begins to come in an unknown tongue. Are you getting me? And so you are speaking. You are just speaking. And while you are speaking, you see, those tongues come from him to your mind. It has to be processed through your mind before your mouth will speak it. Now, you are aware that you are saying something strange but good. And because your mind is on him, soon you begin to see flashes. You begin to see pictures. Ideas begin to come to you. When I mean ideas begin to come, ideas that were not there before. You begin to realize things you never realized before. You're praying for somebody. Maybe someone has hurt you. You're praying for the person. And you're praying like, Eli your mind is on the Holy Spirit. He, he's telling me something now. What is he telling me? He's taking me through the old part. He's taking me through the good part. Oh, this person has really done bad. This person has done me harm. This person has done me evil. This, what this person has done is not good. And then you begin to pray. You begin to pray like that. And then suddenly, you begin to see flashes. You begin to see that that person was under pressure. I, I'm telling you literally. You begin to see that person was under pressure. You begin to see what was behind that person's action. Oh, now you were feeling hot and angry over that person. Then suddenly, you just begin to feel sorry for the person. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And every hurt that you carry begins to vanish away. Because you're seeing truths. You see, what's going on, that ancient part is what you're being led in. Because I'll tell you something about that ancient part. It's not about how people walk on that path. It's how your heart is maintained on that path. The ancient path has to do with your heart. How you maintain your heart in his righteousness. So suddenly you begin, I'm telling you, when you know this, it will give you ease. It will give you great comfort in your marriage. It will give you great comfort in your relationship with people as a boss or as an employee. It will give you great comfort in dealing with people. Because while you pray, you will begin to understand differences. You will begin to understand, oh, this person is not bad after all. Something overtook him. Oh, this person, this is where the challenge is coming from. Now your heart begins to be clear. And then you, 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 you don't pray. The same thing, you're looking for something. And while you pray, the, the Spirit begins to take your mind. It begins to bring flashes to your mind. Have you checked into so and so place? Have you checked? And, oh, wow. How come I never thought about this? That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Guess what's happening? He's bringing you rest. So this is how you find rest in prayer. Hallelujah. He takes you to that ancient path, that old path. And hey, what did he say? It is, it's the good part, not the part of challenges. So if you find yourself in challenging situations, challenging circumstances, find the old part. How? Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Not just praying in tongues, pray in the spirit. And my time is up. Praise God. I love you dearly today. And I declare that the Holy Spirit will take you, give you the right utterance concerning what you're dealing with and your mind becomes fruitful in it. Hey, Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.